Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. I'm Fiona, welcome back to my channel. So somebody asked me if I would do a vlog talking about the types of jobs that you could do here in Tanzania. And to be honest, if you're doing, I don't think it's more about jobs. I think if you come over to Tanzania and you're doing a job for working for an employer, um, then it's because they have brought you over, or invited you over. So. The jobs that those types of jobs would include for charities, um, if, there's a, in, if there's an international bank, um, for schools, you know, farms, you know, that type of uh, work or hotel where the owner of the hotel is from um, a foreign country and they want someone Western to, to run it, then that would be the type of business. So I'm going to talk about um, 15 um, business ideas. Um, that someone you could develop here in Tanzania and it's things that I have either experienced definitely experienced and definitely seen as a shortfall in Tanzania um, and it's not it's the ideas that I'm going to suggest are not necessarily necessarily for one particular place in Tanzania um, but maybe one of them will be <laughs> one of them definitely will be for one particular place but once we get there i'll let you know so let's start so number one customer services customer services there is no customer services um i think i heard someone talk about this before there's no customer services here um it's i i i, I think it's a matter of uh, culture and also lack of training or knowledge and experience and having an understanding of what customer services actually is. And so, you know, I've gone to the bank and the woman or the man behind the, the counter just on their phone and I'm just standing there waiting or there's no hello or it's very, would feel very dismissive or um, they're not very helpful in giving you information. Um, so yeah, customer services is not a thing here. So if you're a professional in customer services, human resources, and you can come over here and with an accredited program, so for instance, designer, um, customer training, customer services training, um, human resources training, maybe reach out to some of like the banks and the hospitals, etc., and provide accredited training to upskill. Um, the staff and introduce better customer services that would be wonderful in the entire um, Tanzania country <laughs> because customer services is not great it really isn't um, and yes there is us having that understanding that we're in a different country and people do things differently but I think you know they I think they would also benefit from learning Western um, skills um, and how to deal with people from different parts of the world um, so yeah customer services and HR number two IT sales and repairs so a few a few months ago yeah a few months ago I needed um, a plug for my um, laptop not the plug but you know the lead I needed the lead for my laptop and I went to, there's like one main place in mainland and um, I went there, I went to, they've got a repair uh, shop, um, it's not very clean, it's disorganised and I think they just make up the prices, you know, on the top of, off the top of their head. There's no like warranty on anything that you, on the things that you buy there, so I purchased a plug. Um, and I think I've said the plug, I mean the lead that um, connects to the plug that would connect to my laptop. And I think it lasted for about a month, a month and a half, let's be generous, a month and a half. And then I had to go back and I complained that, you know, I say complained, I just raised it with them that it wasn't, didn't work anymore. And so they've since given me another one which I had to pay for. So in terms of IT, repairs services customer services as well um, if you're if that is your field and you can you know come over here and open up a store 
open up an online service, make, making people, especially foreigners, aware that your service actually exists. Having a price list, um, training your staff so they know how to deal with customers and deal with issues, um, and getting quality services. Have, you're going to have also a storefront. You know, make sure it's clean. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it's orderly. Sorry, the flies. <laughs> make sure it's orderly. It's not covered in dust. Just a proper store. Yeah, I'm not talking about it has to be Apple and because I don't own any Apple products, but it just has to be, you know, friendly and inviting and people in there know what they're talking about and efficient and a trustworthy store and service. So IT sales and repairs. Number three co-working space and internet cafes. Now, of course, most people have um, their own laptop, tablet, phone, it's got the, uh, you know, all that you need, but it would be nice, like for instance here, I'm doing this vlog, it would have been, it would be nice to have a co-working space to go to, take my laptop, take my camera, um, and take everything with me, um, you know, maybe rent out a little room there and do my vlog, because you know, it's quite breezy, ocean the tides coming in you can hear this man <laughs> chatting away. you know so having an actual co-working space it could be a cafe down at the bottom at the bottom or internet cafe at the bottom and the co-working space at the top i don't know but that would be i think really useful and I, I know there are people there's a few people here um that are digital nomads and um, i don't know if they're passing through but they're definitely here working here from their laptops so that would be a really nice option um, to have. So, internet cafe, co-working space. Number four, supermarket. So in mainland, we have one main, I say mainland, yeah, mainland, there's one main supermarket and that's Shoppers. Um, there's Dodoma, there's Arusha, there's Da, and um, I think they're opening another one somewhere else. And they're large, they're large stores. Um, generally, you can get most of the things that you need there, but you know, there's no harm in competition, right? You know, you go to England, you've got Waitrose, Asda, Tesco's, Lidl. I think the list goes on and on. So it would be nice if there was an option. Do also have um, supermarkets that are a little bit smaller. Um, sometimes you can find things that are, you know, a little bit dusty. Even in shoppers, like you pick something up and there's a lot of dust on it. Um, and they have, they've become very good at now at um, taking things off the shelf if they're close to their sell by date. Um, so, yeah, a supermarket or um, an, a supermarket that has de um, items from um, that are not necessarily in um, the largest supermarkets. That would be great. So, supermarket. Number five. Gym, <laughs> gym, CrossFit studio, boxing studio, spin studio, yoga studio. I'm talking now about everywhere. <laughs> um, I know Dar has um, more gym um, gyms on offer, but anywhere else, even here in Zanzibar, is not much choice, especially like for CrossFit. Body, um, body combat studios with you know spin um, step classes all those types of things are not available here um, I know that um, setting up a gym is a huge expense and a huge investment but I th there's a lot of people here and a lot of people from what I have seen who are visiting use the gym whilst they are here visiting so um, if you um, are really passionate about sports and fitness like me um, then definitely and you want to set up a business then that is something to really think about in different parts of Tanzania because there are foreigners in different parts of Tanzania and um, they would certainly if it's clean if things are working I want to emphasize if it's clean if things are working um, and you're offering different classes, you're offering personal training services, and it's just a very, you know, structured and organized environment, clean, clean, um, <laughs> and everything's working. 
um, then that would be really great. So yeah, gym, body combat, Pilates, yoga, CrossFit, those type of fitness studios would be great. Number six. So this is based on another experience and also a conversation. Electricians, carpenters, plumbers. Now, the country does not need any of those people, but they, some of those people here, a lot of them need training. And it's not because they're not skilled. They're highly skilled. They can make anything. But I'm talking about, for instance, where I work, the maintenance people that look after um, the areas that I work in, they have one guy who's the supervisor, hasn't had training for 20 years. So you can imagine you're working in a modern environment with someone who's not up to date with very modern things. Um, and it goes for a lot of, you know, some of the funders here who do plumbing and carpentry and maintenance, all of those things, they're not up to date with like technology and the types of style and decor or maintenance that you have introduced and need repairing. So if you can um, bring accredited training, um, knowledge and be consistent in that and that type of service, I mean I suppose you could reach out to larger companies and train and upskill their plumbers, carpenters, electricians, then that would be amazing. That would be a great, great service. But as I said, you have you have all of those things here, but a lot of them um, are um, lacking in, in updated skills. That's probably the best way to put it. Number seven. Now, I don't know if this is a bias thing. <laughs> Restaurants, places to eat, good places to eat. Um, not just, just in general, just having a var um, variation. I went to, no, the last time I had something was at this falafel place and I added it to one of my blogs. Sorry, the table's moving around. I added it to one of my blogs and it was awful. That was not a falafel. So just having um, just different varieties of food available to people would be a real bonus. Um, and I'd say all of Tanzania, again, I would say all of Tanzania. Um, some people might disagree with me, but you know, competition is a good thing, right? Um, and variety is definitely a great thing. So yeah, restaurants, cafes. Um, when I first came here uh, to Zanzibar, in my mind, I thought that it would be very similar or have some similarities to Bali. You know, Bali has got so many restaurants, so many cafes, lots of juice this and juice that, and just this vibe of, of cool places to eat, and you can just go and lounge there and snack, and just, and that's what I thought I was, would kind of see, not exactly the same, but I'd kind of get that. It's not like that at all. Um, and I'm not expecting it to be that, if you kind of get what I mean. But certainly having options, um, because what I have tried has not been great. Um, so yeah, restaurants and cafes. Number eight. So this might be another personal option um, for my, I don't know, I think it will be a benefit. But rehab, rehabilitation, physio, Pilates, massage therapy, I think would be, even if you work on a, um, you don't have like a, a, a physical place and you can go to um, people's homes and offer those rehab services, I think it would be wonderful. I dislocated my shoulder, oh it's been three years now um, since I dislocated my shoulder and I was in rehabilitation almost immediately um, for what, two years? Um, oh no, about a year and a half. I left and then <clears throat> before I left China and it would be nice to continue although I do still some I still do some of the exercises 
um, to help with my shoulder. It would still be nice to go to someone who understands rehabilitation, go to, you know, go and have massages, doing Pilates, that type of rehab. So if you are skilled in rehabilitation, um, sports injuries, injuries um, and massage, deep tissue massage, sports massages, all that type of rehabilitation for the body and the mind, then this is the place for you to come and start that business. Number nine, logistics. I think most people might agree, <laughs> agree with me. So when I moved from Asia, I used FedEx and DHL. And FedEx in China and FedEx was connected to DHL. And DHL is what is considered to be the most reliable logistics company and the one that will be recommended to you if you need to move your things and DHL can be quite expensive so if you are in a, if you own your own logistics company or can come over and create a logistics company that would be great a company also that provides you know packing service brings the boxes everything that a removals company um, would do that would be wonderful um, also something that's online so you can see what you're offering tracking service um, because when it comes time for me to move I have seven boxes I'm hoping that it's not more than seven boxes but when it comes time for me to move from mainland I'm going to have to use DHL um, that will be my only only option so yes logistics company removals company sorry the flies are on. <laughs> removals company would be a huge huge bonus here okay number 10 okay public transport now they have public transport here they have Dalla Dalla they have um, the Bajaji the Boda Boda they have larger buses like coaches that go from you know main towns to another main town for instance if you're going from I don't know, Kilimanjaro and you want to get to Dar, there's a larger bus that would do that long journey. Um, but this might be a, a business where you could come in, improve the bus service, actually have bus times that are available. You can go online, look at the bus times, you can book your ticket online, you get all the information that you need online. I know I'm, it's, this, is all, this whole online talk is probably a little bit more advanced, but why, why should it be? You know why should it be why can't we have it here um, improve the buses better buses that are cleaner inside and outside under the hood and outside of the hood um, not admit no they're not emitting you know black smoke fumes they don't look like they're just going to break down at the side of the road um, safer inside more comfortable and just a better bus service, a service where you know where there's bus stops, you can go and stand at the bus stop and they'll pick you up. Um, that would be a really significant service to have in all of Tanzania. I believe Dar has a bus service, but I'm not quite sure how efficient it is. But if you're going Kilimanjaro, Arusha, here, no, 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 no. That would be, I think you'd be greatly appreciated if it was approved, if it was um, improved, should I say. I mean, currently, I see people who are on holiday here and foreigners using public transport, and it's fine and it's safe, but I'm talking about business ideas and development. Buses. Number 11, civil engineers. Don't know if you noticed, if you, if you watched my last vlog where I was coming back from um, Stone Town, the roads, the roads are terrible. Um, and actually, heading into Stone Town, not all the way, like at the, almost like at the beginning of Stone Town, they have widened the roads. The roads are atrocious. They've widened them, but there's no like signs to say, yes, you stay on the left, stay on the right. You know, there's no crossroads, there's nothing. It's so dangerous. Um, so there's just traffic just everywhere. So civil engineer to come and 
fix the roads, um, I noticed that there are foreigners who possibly might have, who've got the bid uh, for to do that road or do that whole stretch of the road over in Stonetown. Um, and they are obviously the, the main people who are managing that contract. Um, so I don't know if it's something that you would come and do, put a bid into the community, uh, to the, the um, government and say, look, we can do the roads for this cost, etc. This is what we can do. Put in some street furniture, some, you know, zebra crossings, pedestrian lights, just the whole thing to make it safer and more comfortable for everybody. Drivers, children can't even cross the roads. I mean, there are these huge trucks just tearing down the road and then you look and you'll see like tiny children hoping to just try and cross the road it's just tragic so yeah civil engineer come and fix the roads put in some street furniture and improve transportation in tanzania number 12 <laughs> this might be a little bit random <laughs> arborists <laughs> And I say that an arborist, if you don't know, are people who look after the trees. Um, and I think pretty much in all of Tanzania, the trees are very, 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 very old. You have a lot of fruit, a lot of food growing from trees here. Um, but it doesn't appear that anyone's looking after them. The government actually have control over those tree over the trees here, and you have to get permission to cut them down or to even trim them. I know that from where I work, there's a lot of trees and some have just started, started falling. Trees that have been there for like 60, 70 plus years have just been falling and massive and just falling. And no one's really looking after them. Yet you have to get um, permission to look after them. So if that's the job, that you are passionate about and that you're qualified in doing and you could come over here and look after the huge amount of trees <laughs> that need looking after arborists <laughs> number 13 so rubbish and recycling so they do have recycling and they do have rubbish collection but it's not consistent in terms of, okay, every Monday it's rubbish. They're coming and collecting from your place. And Wednesday is recycling day, or you can recycle in this particular position in, um, place. You just bring your box and you can go and recycle, or they'll come and collect your green box to recycle. There isn't that type of system. And you don't have like, um, rubbish bins like you do in like the Western world where you have your bin and they come and they lift it and empty it and put it back so that would be really beneficial I know for instance like on the beach they do recycle they pick up the bottles but I've noticed that that only happens here at Jambiani end of the beach once a week or once every two weeks I see them um, so a rubbish and recycling service would be really, really beneficial. Number 14, this is what I was talking <laughs> This is what I was talking about. If you are a loctician, someone who deals with locks, hair, Jambiani, Page, Zanzibar definitely needs you. Um, in Jambiani, there's one hair salon and the guy apparently thinks he knows what he's doing, but he clearly doesn't. Um, yeah, there's not enough. Um, and a lot of the, you know, there's a lot of people wearing locks here. And you can go to, jump on the boat, go to Da, if you jump on the boat and go there like a whole day trip or spend the night if you go to Dar and get it done properly or go to mainland and get it done properly when I'm in mainland there's a girl that does my hair she does it wonderfully but here for instance in Zanzibar no they need in my opinion they need someone who is really skilled in doing locks doing hair beauty skincare all of those things that would be great services over here and finally Online services. Now, somebody sent me a message 
or wrote a message asking me about online services and would online services do would, would online services do well in Zanzibar? Absolutely. I think like with anything that you do, any of the professions that I've mentioned or just anything that you want to set up, if you're going to set it up in a place like Tanzania, you've just got to be consistent and really full on with your marketing. Marketing and consistency and have just a good product and service that you're selling to people. Um, so online services and a lot of these things and the professions that I mentioned can have online services, online products that you can make available and be consistent. Keep your website up to date, keep your website fresh, keep it interactive, you know, make sure that people are aware, aware of it, put it on all the social medias. I mean, I only use Instagram and YouTube, but at least if it's available, like I, um, since I've been here, I've used, I found four um, companies, Tanzanian companies, skincare products or shea butter or natural things hair products skincare products and although I googled them I didn't find them via Google I think the algorithm after I googled and did a search the algorithm kind of did some magic and I, they were recommended via Instagram and that's how I found them so online services if you're going to do anything online here make sure that it is up to date and it's accessible um, some people have you know like you go to google and it will show that the website and directions etc and then you click on the website the website it's 404 there is no website um, so yeah make sure that you are offering a really fresh website for people to access it's always available, it's not down, it's the, the grammar, um, the information is um, very clear, no errors, it's very professional. And then just make sure people are aware of what your online services is about. So those were my 15 job, well not job, business ideas um, that I think would benefit um, Tanzania, definitely benefit Tanzania, definitely benefit whoever sets up one of those businesses or any business um, here in Tanzania and de definitely benefit, um, you know, just the community that that business starts up in. So I hope you found that useful. If you have any uh, questions about um, any of the businesses that I've mentioned or make a suggestion of business ideas, drop it in the comments. We can chat there. Don't forget to sub. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to share. Bye-bye.